Welcome to another VBA tutorial. I'm going to keep this one nice and short. It's going to talk about cells and for loops. Here's the example. I have option explicit, so I have to declare all of my variables before using them. And I created a sub called using cells. Cells are very much like range in a lot of aspects. So if you type in cells, parentheses, it's not asking you for the letter like A5 or whatever. It's asking you for a row and a column. So the row index for example, the one highlighted here is number 9. It's row 9, and the column is F. So row 9, comma, and it's asking me for a column index. But you can't put F in there. It's a number that they want. So A, B, C, D, E, F. That's the sixth letter in the alphabet, so put in the number 6. Then you can use the dot notation just like you did with range. Um, I'm not sure why the methods aren't populating, but they're very similar to range. So you can do dot select to see. Uh, let me unselect it first. And then let's go over here and just run it, F5, and you see that F9 has been selected. We can also do dot value equals blank. We want to blank that out, F5, and it's gone. Okay, now let's get into the meat of why cells are a little bit different than range and probably for the best. Uh, we're going to do a loop that loops through. We want to clear out the entire row 9 all at once, or one at a time, but very quickly. So let's create an integer value called uh, iterator. We're going to do iterator as an integer value. So the name of my data type or object is iterator. It's of type integer. I'm also going to initialize iterator to equal 1. I want to start on the first column. So we're going to iterate through the columns. And we're going to zero them out just like this. So instead of putting the number 6 in there, we're going to put the number iterator in there and it's it is a number because it ties to this which is tied to the one which was declared here so let's run this and see if this would be the ninth row in the first column should blank out so the so a9 1993 should disappear let's run that f5 and it's gone now how do we actually iterate through well we know that f is the last one later episodes I'll show you how to figure that out uh, without counting but for now, we know that f is the 13th value, so we want to iterate from 1 to a number 13. So let's put that into what we call a for loop. Almost every programming language has some sort of loop. Um, there's multiple loops. There's while loops. There's do loops. But today, we're just going to focus on this for loop. For uh, iterator, so you need a some sort of something to, uh, some object that you're going to traverse. Uh, I'm going to traverse integer objects called iterator. Uh, for iterator, equals 1, 2, 13. So simple. It's just like you would say in English almost. Now at the end you want to hit the word, you want to type the word next in there. Alright, so because I'm initializing it here as well, um, the compilers or the yeah, I don't know if I don't know how VBA works, but most programming languages will say that hey you've already assigned this. So before we even run this code, it's going to uh, make sure that it's most efficient by not doing this twice in a row. So with programming languages like C++, you don't have to worry. I'm not sure with VBA, so maybe every step counts. Maybe it's a uh, uh, procedural language step by step. Anyways, that's beyond the scope of this. So for iterator, it was 1 to 13. 1 to 13. So it's literally going to do this 13 times, but each time it's going to increase the iterator value by 1, and it's going to go... Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So let's let's test it out. Let's test it out. Let's hit F5, and we see the entire row is gone, all the way to M. Okay, easy enough. That's a for loop. Now, just to give you a little practice with the debugger, let's put a little. Um, see where my cursor is. Click right there, and you're going to see a highlight, and you're going to see this little dot here. To get rid of the dot, you click it again, just so you know. So click that dot. Let's run this again, but let's do a different let's do a different row. Let's do row uh, 10. And let's watch this one at a time and I'll show you what's really going on here. So hit play or hit F5 like you normally do. And you notice it stops. I hit play right away it stops. Cells 10, iterative value, da da da. So the F8 button or the if you go to debug and you go to step over or um, step into same thing, so F8 will let it keep going. But before you keep going, take your mouse and go over where it says iterator, and it says iterator equals 1. Okay? Hit F8, and you'll see that this little arrow says it's going to the next function. Hit F8 again. Keep an eye on it. Iterator equals 1. 
F8 again. Now look what. Iterator equals 2. F8. It's stepping through one step at a time. Iterator equals 3, 4, 5, 6. And see how they're disappearing over here? So I value should disappear, and it's gone. And you can take this off. You can finish it up by hitting play. And that's your quick tutorial on why cells are good. You see why you can't do that with range because it's you know it's um, A B C D E F G, and we really don't want to do the alphabet here. You can't add numbers or divide numbers, or I mean letters. So I hope this helps you out and gives you an idea of for loops and what cells are.